New York City. It's my kind of town. Millions of people crammed in just to a few square miles. Hundred times that many pigeons. But there's also national parks. So right now, I'm gonna meet a couple of my friends. They don't know they're my friends yet. And visit a few parks. Let's see what happens. Greetings, greetings. Bill, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> what are you doing in here? We're gonna check out some national parks. OK, sounds good. So this is Grant's tomb. This thing has 8,000 tons of granite. The Eiffel Tower had 7,300 tons of steel. There's 700 more tons of granite than the Eiffel Tower. It was a big deal. On behalf of the National Park Service, welcome to the General Grant National Memorial. Here, let me show you a couple other things. Sorry, I'm sorry, a little unconventional. The guy behind me honked when I stopped at the stop sign. Our second stop, Castle Clinton. So was it actually a castle? Uh, no. <laughs> it was a fort, so it is round. Cannonballs bounce off. There's no sharp edges. Uh -huh. From here, we can see Liberty Island, and that's our next national park. Come on. The thing that a statue stands on is its plinth, and the Statue of Liberty's got a fabulous plinth. Gift of France, she's coated in copper, enough copper to make 30 million pennies. So if it's made of copper, then why is it green? Copper turns green in air, in oxygen. The same way uh, iron turns uh, rust colored, that's rust. If you look closely, I believe you'll see another national park, the African Burial Ground. And you know the old saying, you can find a national park in New York City, you can find a national park anywhere. I'm, I'm not sure that's an old saying, but it should be. <laughs> so get out there and find your park. Uh, Ricky, let me start by saying you are so fine. You blow my mind. Oh, it, thank you. It's actually, the song is actually Mickey, but I do appreciate it. I had it. to, we're paraphrasing. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Bill, so talk to me about what you're doing here. It's 100 years of national parks. You are the, the spokesman, if you will. I haven't been here for all 100. Well, I mean, <laughs> I know many of you watched the show when you were growing up. But I, anyway, so this 100th anniversary of the national parks, Woodrow Wilson, who was a government employee at that time, signed the uh, Organic Act, August 25th, 1916. And I'd just like to remind everybody how wonderful national parks are. And they're part of our ancestors' legacy. It is our responsibility to preserve them. And so during the 100th anniversary, we celebrate them. Yes. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> national parks, national parks. <laughs> when the voice goes up, you clap, guys. That's usually that's no, how it goes. Uh, it's, but it's an, an important thing. And uh, right here in New York City, we have several, we have a dozen parks, I guess. So. Uh, you travel the country. I was recently in Glacier National Park, soon to be uh, Sandy Stone Hillside National Park. Uh, the glaciers will be gone uh, by 2025. They'll be 2025. Yeah, there'll be snow. There'll be snow fields, but the glaciers, as such, will be gone. Uh, so something to think about. And there's no place in the world like the Grand Canyon. No place. Uh, we just recently set aside stone. Uh, Stonewall Monument here in New York City. So there, my what I'm driving at is there are spectacular landscapes, but there are also uh, historic places that are of great significance. Absolutely. I mean, Stonewall itself it's a very small park, but it has a historical. It's significance. very significant. Yeah. Yeah. When you travel, pursuit of happiness. When you travel around to all of these parks all across the country, and, and I think there's. 400 and something? More than that, yeah, and There's something, exactly. Something like that. Uh, what's on your mind as a scientist right now who's done so much work on climate change, who sort of works on sort of trying to change legislation for the better of science and for the better of the environment, when you walk around and you see these national parks that are in many ways government funded and also seeking out fundraising on their own, what are the things that you think about? How? <laughs> It's a broad question, I realize. So it's, uh, yeah, the national parks are these preserved places. And the reason our ancestors preserved them is because they thought they were important as well as beautiful. They thought and the environment was important. Yes, they did. And the environment's important for all of us. You know, it's, uh, the big thing you know, going forward is we have, when I was a kid, 
In New York City in 1965, we had fewer than 3 billion people in the world. Today we have 7.3. By 2050, there will certainly be 9 billion. It's very reasonable that there will be 10 billion people. And they're all going to want something to eat and some place to go, and everybody's going to want clean water. And so the national parks are a reminder of how important uh, our environment is to our health as people. And it's just also something to think about. We want the parks to be here 100 years from now. So they, they've been here the last 100 years, but what's going to be like in 2016? Uh, I mean, t in uh, 2116? It's going to be a heck of a thing. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people trying to make a living, trying to eat, and so on. And it's going to be very important to keep those places And so many uh, of the ways that we, that we live and we do eat will change drastically by, by, by 2116, right? I mean... It the, is presumed. Yeah, I think it's safe to presume that yeah. as well. But with national parks, we can at least preserve an element of who we once were, what the earth once was. Hold it, it may be better. Curious. Let's cheer it up, people. <laughs> Maybe by 2116, the world will be a little better. We'll go through a uh, rough patch, and we'll square things away. And I presume the Grand Canyon will be even grander, what with the processes of erosion. And uh, by, by I'm talking about millimeters and centimeters here, everybody. But uh, places like uh, Poverty Point, Louisiana. Louisiana is in the news this week. Uh, those places are going to be radically changed uh, as the ocean gets bigger. I was just in uh, Everglade National Park, which is a unique place, and uh, we decided to punch holes in... Uh, punch holes. Drill. Modify. No, no, modify. Old dikes, old uh, causeways that ran east-west through across the state of Florida, which inhibited the north-to-south flow of fresh water. You know, are any Floridians here? Woo! Uh, uh, water's a big issue in Florida, yeah? Yeah, so uh, this is something to think about, that we can make changes. We can preserve the environment. But the sooner we get to work, the better. Yes? No, continue if you, if you were still going. No, no, I, okay, I was so trying to finish a paragraph there. Uh, tonight, tonight is a massive celebration for, massive. for the 100 years, yeah. right? Brooklyn huge. Bridge Park. It's gonna, oh, you got, a, you got a little Trump impression in there for me? No, no. Uh, <laughs> it sounded like it. That was. It's going to be that huge. Was more, that was more, uh, due respect, more of a valley accent. Oh, okay. <laughs> over the hill from Hollywood, like over the hell from Hollywood. <laughs> and so uh, it's going to be for the young people. That's what I was going for there. So it's, uh, if you've never been, for example, Brooklyn Bridge National Park, mm -hmm. spectacular place. You play soccer, football right there, and there's Manhattan just for free right there. And uh, so we want to preserve Bridge places beautiful. like that. Say again? And the Brooklyn Bridge going Brooklyn into Manhattan. Bridge. It's, it's beautiful. Manhattan. Huge. <laughs> Huge. There's like just an carousel. age. No why. Yeah. So it's just, I, I can't say enough good things. Uh, everybody, come on out. Uh, Quest Love will be there, rocking the house. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, come on down and celebrate the 100th anniversary of the national parks. Now, you are essentially, at this, at this point in time in your career, I feel like you are the national spokesman for science. I love you, man. Right <laughs> on. In, in many ways. So how do you decide what to lend your name to? What's important to you as the sort of, sort of national spokesman for well, science? Uh, I let my, if I understand that term, I'm an ambassador for the national parks because I believe national parks are beautiful, wonderful things, uh, part of our heritage, and we also want them to be part of our legacy. But with that said, uh, the things that I'm into, did I mention climate change and space exploration and climate change? Did I say climate change earlier? July was the hottest month on record, right? Oh, don't worry. It's just, a, don't worry about it. It's just a little climate change. By the way, there were people going around and around speculating that 2015 would have been the hottest year on record and because El Nino tapered off 2016 would have been cooler. But it doesn't look like that. that's what's going on. Um, through all the compromises needed to issue reports in English at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, people have spoken very conservatively about uh, the rate at which the climate is changing. So it doesn't surprise me that actually 2016... So far, hottest year on record. With that said, everybody, young people, AOL, build three things we want for everybody in the world. 
Clean water, not a trivial thing. Renewable, reliable electricity for everyone in the world. And what's the third thing, Ricky? A world to live in? Oh, information. information. Okay. Access to the internet or whatever the future, whatever it's going to be called in the hunt in 50 years, whatever that's called, the interweb, the information super rail system or something. Uh, series of tubes. Series. Well, it'll or or uh, light fibers. So we want to get that to everybody. So if there are, for example, remote villages in the developing world, we will connect them with a constellation of satellites. And we do this because it will raise the quality of life for everyone in the world. And if you want the human population to go down steadily, steadily and manageably, manageably, raise the standard of living of women, girls and women. And uh, half the humans are girls and women. So let's have half the engineers be and scientists be women. Let's Absolutely. Go. Yes. Let's go. Now, I hate to I'm get... not digressing. I'm really not. I don't think you're digressing at all. I it's think all of thing. this is wrapped up in the same in the same thing. I hope that I'm not digressing with this question uh, because part of my personal obsession right now is I think it should be everybody's. But all of these things that are important to you and not just you but are important to all of us, how dramatic is this election for you? Oh, man. <laughs> if you like to worry about things, <laughs> this is a good time. Uh, so everybody, uh, you guys, you're, uh, the audience here watching is AOL subscribers and build people. You are probably generally progressive thinkers, progressively inclined, and so on. But you can hate me, you can hate puppies, you can hate everything, but take the environment into account when you vote. Just when you, the most important thing you can do this year for climate change, for humankind, in my opinion, is vote. I'm not going to tell you for whom to vote, but consider the environment when you vote, and national parks, I hope, will remind you of the importance of the environment. Did I, did I phrase that well enough? Yeah, I think you phrased that well enough. You, <laughs> you're trying. You're 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 trying very hard to be diplomatic about it. I, I and being I diplomatic, we everybody has a choice, but uh, you have to vote. And I, there's a very well-known guy on the conservative side, who was a employee of the state of Florida for a long time. He said he's not going to vote. He's not going to vote because he's so disenchanted with his political party, Jeb Bush. And uh, why not vote for the other? Well, party? okay. Yeah. So if you don't vote, you're just checking out. And this is not what you want. This is, not, this is your one chance to steer things. Now, when you have a World Series or a World Cup or a, a Super Bowl, you end up with two teams. And having three teams in a baseball game would be very would be bewildering. I don't know if you've ever played Chinese checkers with the six things, but <laughs> it would be really hard be really hard to tell who won if you had three teams. So by uh, natural processes, we have end up, ended up with two parties. You got to pick, people. Bust my chops. You got to pick. <laughs> it's not my fault. I, I showed up. And at the, at the same time, to get a little more in the weeds about it, o Obama in the last, uh, I think it was this, this past year, enacted one of the sort of greatest acts uh, against climate change with France, right? I'm, excuse me, I, I'm lacking the vernacular to properly articulate what it was. He went, to, he went to Paris. He went to Paris. To the Conference of the Parties. Thank you. COP. But it's also, isn't it only, uh, isn't it only action that he took as the president and that essentially the next president could come in and wipe it, wipe the slate. Well, here's what we want, people. Now, I am not objective at all about this. I'm. I was born in the United States. I was graduated from engineering school in the United States. I worked for United States company Boeing, which people talk about the trade deficit. Boeing is good for the U.S. trade deficit. When you sell airplanes for billions of dollars a year, that's money coming into the U.S. So I am a prideful patriot of, about the U.S. And I want the United States to lead the world in the technologies required to address climate change and the policies, especially the policies. This is not an extraordinary thing, everybody. If the United States is, you can, I'll argue anybody about this, the United States is the most influential culture in the world. 
And with the, if the United States were leading in wind energy, solar energy, a little bit of geothermal, some tidal energy, we would transform things. Now, for those of us uh, here in the, on the East Coast, half the people in the United States live in the Eastern time zone. Uh, the big unexploited, uh, untapped resource is wind energy off our East Coast. And if we got to work on that right now, we could, dare I say it, change the world. <laughs> and so it'd be exciting. Let's go, people. My parents were both veterans of World War II. And they did not set out to be the greatest generation, which was what they're called now. You just, they were just playing the hand they were dealt. So to, I see a lot of young people in the audience. I'm sorry. <laughs> people my age didn't really do much about this. <clears throat> Tried. <clears throat> <laughs> so <The boomers. laughs> so uh, we can do this, everybody. Those, my parents and their, colleague, their uh, contemporaries changed the world in five years, or whatever you call World War II. They got it done. They got up there and got it done. So I want you all to have renewable, reliable electricity for everybody in the world, clean water, and access to the Internet or the future manifestation of the Internet. Let's go. Let's do it. Now, does it make you does it does it make you nervous as a person who is uh, an ambassador for national parks, right? Which is a, a wonderful and beautiful thing. To it's do. cool. Preserving national parks is an absolutely beautiful thing, and as well as fighting, I think uh, fighting climate change is a is a wonderful thing, as well. But does it? Do you ever get dismayed with the fact that it seems that there is a large amount of people who have a uh, personal gain or financial gain out of distracting people from fighting climate change or even regarding national parks as something that they should pay f people should have to pay for in their taxes and care about? Well, uh, I think I understand your question. The first thing is we kind of take national parks for granted in many ways, yeah, because they're huge. They're hu You look at Grand Canyon. You sure that's not a Trump impression, Mr. Nye? Are you sure? Uh, I th uh, they're huge, believe me, okay. would be, yeah. Uh, if you have to say believe me continually, should I? Really? <laughs> so that aside, you think, look at the Grand Canyon. It's so big, you think, well, this will always be here. But with enough people making inroads, enough people wanting to get natural resources, mineral rights from under that land and so on, things could go wrong. So... The only, I mean, nominally, the way you preserve national parks as a society is you pay for them through your taxes, tax, through your contributions to the greater good. We cannot use the, the T word. And then should we, uh, should we get rid of the word taxes and sort of abbreviate it for contributions well, to the greater good? We'll get through this. We're in a, we're, this, this pendulum will swing back. CTGG, contributions to the greater good. That's C not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. That's what it's called now. Contribution to the greater good, right on. Uh, but uh, along this line, uh, the fossil fuel industry has been very successful in promoting the idea that uh, plus or minus 2%, scientific uncertainty, conventional scientific uncertainty, is the same as plus or minus 100%. Well, you know, doubt about the whole thing, and that's not anybody's best interest. And sure enough, everybody, the deniers are slowly going out of business. But they're getting louder a little bit. Well, too. and they're... But, it's going to be a near-run thing, and that's why, as we say in sailing, you know, who's going to round the buoy first? So, uh, everybody, please vote and take the environment into account when you vote. That's Uncle Bill's message. Uh, we can do this. And now, along that line, uh, I spoke in West Virginia uh, uh, less than a year ago, and uh, the people in West Virginia has a long tradition of the coal industry. My impression, now these are self-selected people that came to see what's his name, but they are kind of tired of the coal industry themselves. And so if you, if you got, you guys are on the electric internet uh, with your computer machines, check out the Solutions Project. I am not employed by the Solutions Project. I am not a formal solution projector, but these civil engineers have done a study Engineers have done a study uh, that they strongly believe you could power West Virginia, you could power all of the U.S., you could power the world renewably right now if you just decided to do it. The big things are wind and solar. And uh, I have solar panels on my house out west, 
And it's just fun, you guys. You can hate <laughs> me. You can hate... Why would anyone hate Bill Nye the Science Oh, guy? I've met yeah. them. I've met them. You, and you can hate everything. You can be a miserable hater person. <laughs> but it's just fun. It's just fun to get an electric bill for $10 every 60 days. It's just fun. And so uh, that's my panels now are... Um, when did they have 2007? When did they have that? Nine years ago? <laughs> my, my panels... They is in the Gregorian calendar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, my panels have paid for themselves. And they last uh, at least 20 years. And it's, it costs about as much as a car once, but very, very few of us keep a car for 20 years. And so the value of this is, is very high. And, we, and that's with old panels. Now the solar panels are cheaper and better and uh, more plentiful, and the number of companies that will show up to install them on your facility, your house, your place of business, whatever, is greater than ever. So that's, by one, that's only one example. The big, the big uh, energy source is wind here in the U.S. So we can do this, everybody. All right. Let's go. Uh, Ricky, go on. Yes. Yes. I'm 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 curious when you when you talk when you talk about being in West Virginia and meeting former it's just coal by way of example because it was coal country yeah yeah exactly but I'm I'm curious were you surprised to learn that many in coal country didn't want to go back to coal because I remember when when what's his name said on the on the stage we're going to bring coal back and my first thought was who wants that no, I don't yeah. even think the people who worked in the mines want that yeah yeah no it's not a you guys although the working conditions are better than they were a hundred years ago it's still a very difficult job and there's a lot of health risks just uh, objectively for the individual. But in the bigger picture, you know, when you go to West Virginia, there's these beautiful landscapes have been just turned over, just destroyed. Because we, I mean, yes, we want electricity badly, but uh, we can change things. Yeah, just think about the, uh, the changes that our ancestors went through. I mean, we didn't yeah, used to have a 40-day work week, although at AOL, what is it, 68-day 68 hour, what did I say, 40 day, 40 hour work week. What do you guys work, 80 hours a week? That's because you're so into it. I know, like but 30. It cuts 30. into your time. Well, Rick, you're, you know, you're a big time TV lazy. host. No, no, yeah, thank you. It's more, I'm lazy. Thank you, though. Uh, so anyway, this can, this can be done. That's all. The quality of life has steadily improved over the last, over the century. So we can improve it now. Let's be optimistic, people. Let's get her done. Let's open it up to uh, audience questions. First question. Hey, Bill. Thank you for being here. Uh, what was your most memorable moment in a national park as a kid? As a kid? Well, you guys, I, I had very good experiences as a Boy Scout. I know the Boy Scouts have, are subject to controversy nowadays, but it was canoeing. I became, I'm pretty, I'm okay. I'm pretty good canoeist. I'm very confident in the canoe. No, I am. And, uh, this came up the other day, the Blair Witch Project. Great movie. No, get out of the woods, you losers. What is wrong with you? For crying out loud, heck with those kids. Let, them, let the rune makers have their way. Oh, Bill, you don't mean that. Like, well, get out of the woods, for crying out loud. Anyway, there's, as a I kid. I don't hairs here about the Blair Witch Project, Bill, but... Well, I think they tried to get out, and they got lost. They were helpless. Just... They were dingbats. <laughs> Sorry, I got no time for them. We're gonna... But that aside... We're going to get into this backstage, by the no, way. But I big had, fan. Uh, canoeing was great, but uh, recently I was at Glacier National Park just a few weeks ago, and it's just amazing. It's spect I mean, everybody tells it's amazing. I'm not kidding. It's spectacular. When you go out west, the, the scale of things, the scale of the mountains, the scale of the valleys, and the scale of the rivers, although the Hudson River, to be sure, real, it's a real deal. But uh, you get out west, everything is big. It's geologically younger, and stuff is spectacular. Absolutely. Next question. Uh, hi. <laughs> Um, firstly, thank you so much for being such a big part of my oh, childhood. Oh, no, thank you, thank you. I love you, man, Woman. man. I love you, yep. too. <laughs> um, um, so I'm a female who's going into college. Um, it, yeah, I'm going into the STEM field. So, What's the STEM field for your... Computer science. Computer science, right on. Yeah, and I want to kind of change the environment, kind of follow in your footsteps. So what advice do you have for an 18-year-old who's... Here's what we want college? you to do. 
Are you going to you're going to do computer science? But what we want is an electrical grid that distributes electricity more efficiently than we do now. We lose 6% of our energy to transmission lines, so electrical transmission lines. But if we, if we could improve that in the same way uh, cell phone, mobile phone calls are handed from one cell to another, if we could distribute electricity more efficiently, right on. And that's a software problem. Go get them. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Great answer. Next question. How's it going, Bill? Fabulously. Good. Uh, so out of all the things that you've done in your career, what do you still get a thrill out of? Oh, so uh, this last weekend, when did they have that? Yesterday? Uh, I, uh, I'm working on a demonstration uh, where uh, I put carbon dioxide in a fish bowl, a conventional fish bowl, and you see the temperature rise a little more than the other fish bowl with just air in it. And it's, it's working. Now, I, what, uh, this may turn, I gotta run more tests and make sure it's repeatable, but it looks like it's working, I'm just thrilled. When you engineer this tabletop demo to make this point, it's just nothing but fun for me. Uh, How often do you find yourself working on sort of personal projects at home, like little science projects, hobbies? Most of the time. <laughs> No, I get great joy out of it. That's why I went into engineering. I'm a tinkerer. I tink. I like, I like uh, make, making stuff. What do you think your greatest success on a personal project has been? Like a little project that oh, you a started. Personal pro a, personal a personal project. A personal project that you started and then all of a sudden it turned into something much greater or turned into... Well, you uh, the solar hot water system's pretty good. Uh, hey, you guys. I want you to develop solar hot water systems. This is where you use sunlight to heat up your water. It doesn't get all the way hot in most latitudes in the US, but you greatly reduce your heat load where you gotta boost the domestic hot water, you know, the water heater. It works a lot less hard when you have solar energy adding to it. It's just plumbing, everybody. <laughs> it's not rocket surgery. It's just pipes. The United States is great at this. I want one of you to go in that business and change the world. So that was good. Uh, I have a thing that raises the window that's hard to reach with a system of pulleys. <laughs> but I don't know if that's my greatest achievement. That's a tough one. Uh, I don't know if I have a great achievement, you guys. Uh, I think you have many, many great no, achievements. No, but personal projects, thank you. But personal projects, they're just build a tinkerer. Uh, I don't know. I think one of your uh, personal achievements is being the ambassador for the National Parks, which yes. is a massive yes. party tonight, Thank right? You. Thank you, Ricky. So tonight, in Brooklyn Bridge Park, you are going to be there. What time do the festivities start tonight? Well, I'll get there five-ish. Five-ish. <laughs> and uh, there's a big, there's a kooky game, kooky, a charming uh, electrical engineering game where you jump around on this board, on this floor, and you get to change the lights on the Freedom Tower. Come by and do that. It's kind of cool. And uh, then, the, as I say, Quest Love will be there. There'll be music. There'll be happiness. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going to have it rev up as it gets dark. So. And there's this campaign here, hashtag find your park. For those yes, of you who find are your in park. New York, is this a way that people can find their nearest national park, kind of? I thing? feel like you're, that's a, a leading question. And the answer is, yeah. <laughs> Cha. Come on out. There's several parks in the city of New York, and we should all visit them. They are quite cool. Frankly, I did not know about them all till I became an ambassador, and it's big fun. Uh, but one of them is Brooklyn Bridge, so come on over. Mr. Bill Nye, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Rick. Thank you all.